Well, hey there, South Fellowship. Uh, this is Ryan Paulson and coming to you with a video on uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. And we just started a series called Life is Amazing, and we are studying God's will and how to discover God's will. And this passage is one of the passages that talks really uniquely and specifically about how we find God's will. And so um, what I'd like to do is, is read through this passage with you and then just point out the way that one word makes all the difference as we study the scriptures. So um, these are things that, that maybe as you just do a, a read through the Bible, you wouldn't catch. But as you start to study passages in more depth, then these are the things that make um, studying the scriptures really, really exciting and, and beautiful and encouraging. So here's what, what Paul says here. He says, um, therefore, and if you were um, here during the message on Sunday, so this really um, is chapters 1 through 11 of Romans. So he's, he's saying, in light of all that I've said um, about God's redemption um, of us, about God's goodness, um, et cetera, right? All these things. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. Now, the word that I want to focus on, and it's the hinge point of this whole passage, is this word, then. Because um, what, what precedes this word, then, is the context for people who are able to test and approve what is God's will. So, really, if, if we want to know God's will, it's a two-part thing. Um, part one is what he talks about in the first part of verses 1 through 2. And then, then, <laughs> we know God's will. So this is a really, really, this word then, or um, in the ESV, it's um, that. Um, in the NASB, it's um, so that. Uh, is a causal statement. And so the question becomes, as we study the scriptures, well, what is, what goes in this, this part, this part one bucket, what do we need to do in order to position ourselves to test and approve what is God's will is good, pleasing and perfect will. And, and just as a side note, these words test and approve are actually one Greek word um, that means that you can affirm something because of the fact that you've experienced it. Okay. So it's not from the outside looking in, it's the inside <laughs> looking out. And so what does he do? He says first, like view God's mercy. So we talked about this yesterday and I'd encourage you to listen to that message, but um, we will never be people who know God's will unless we're confident of God's confident in God's mercy, that th those are connected things. Um, second, he says, and then offer, offer your bodies. This is a whole um, commitment is what it is. Um, it's an, it's an, I'm in and, um, type of an attitude, but notice what Paul's saying. It, this word then connects this idea. Um, we'll never know God's will unless we're committed to God's way. Um, in fact, you may want to write that down. Um, we'll never know God's will. unless we're committed to God's way. You might hear that next Sunday. That's good. And he says, okay, so we offer ourselves. And then he says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Now, just uh, I just want to point out that both conform and transform have the word formed in them. And we are people who are being formed either by the world um, or by the renewing of our mind, by the kingdom. And so we'll never know God's will unless we know God's mercy 
and trust God's mercy. We'll never know God's will unless we are committed to walking in his way and offering ourselves. And we're nev- we'll never know God's will unless we renew our mind. Now, I, I hope that you go, wow, that's really, that's really interesting because um, in order to know God's will, it, it has to, something has to touch our heart, something has to touch our body, and something has to touch our mind. And, th- and there's this rebirth, this renewal, this change that starts to happen. And, and then here's what, listen to the way that, so if we were to fill in this part one here, what would I say? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say in this part one, what do we need? Um, we need to remember. Uh, we need to commit. Um, and we need to renew. That, that's what Paul's talking about here. And he says, and then when you do that, you'll be able to affirm, to, to experience and enjoy. That, that I think is a great translation of this word, experience and enjoy God's will. <laughs> and he goes, and you want that because it's good. It's pleasing and it's perfect. So I hope that today you're encouraged as you study the scriptures to just realize how much how, how much weight one word can carry. And in, a, in the line of an argument, this word then <laughs> hinges on mercy, hinges on offering, and hinges on renewal. Then we'll know God's will. And I hope you do today. And I hope you enjoy it because it's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. Hey, um, don't miss next week as we dive more into um, God's will and God's way. Have a great rest of your day.